Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to my channel. This is the third video in making the Wonky Log Cabin Journal, third and final video. Um, so I finished the cover. Last time I stitched, if you remember, I stitched the edge pieces right sides together with the lining. And then um, what I've done is I've gone, I hope you can see, I've got you quite high up and I'm on my standing up desk because um, I need to do binding. Just checking it's focused. You see I've just done running, whoa, go on, focus, there we go. I've just done running stitch all the way around the edge of this um, little strip that I turned to the front and left it raw edge all the way around, except for this other end here, which is still open because um, I want to trap the, the cord in there, the twiny cord, which is here, ready and waiting. And I think I'll do that after I've bound it, because I think this might get in the way when I'm binding. Um, so I've just left that for now with little pins in. The other thing I've done, where I made the pocket, I did talk about it I think last week, is I've stitched two extra lines of running stitch down here. You can see it's still got the blue pen, actually I should get rid of that. Um, water should, I hope, get rid of that. Um, all I did was measure from the end and draw a line and then another line. And those two lines correspond with um, this piece, you know, where it's going to come up around the edge of the journal. So in effect, I'll now have two smaller pockets, as I talked about here and here, for pencils or, you know, whatever, sewing paraphernalia. Um, right, so the first thing I need to do is um, just show you the pages, the signatures. These are all from my tea and rust dyeing that I did in, in that two-part video. I've made the pages, I'll take one away off to show you it's easier. I've made the pages slightly shorter than the journal cover. Do you see that? Just so that they sit just inside the cover. And um, in terms of distance from the spine, if I feel here where my spine is, where I put that cardboard, and butt it up against the the spine where it'll sit when it's bound. Again, it's about half an inch in from the edge of the cover. I just like that. I mean, if you like them to be flush with the edge, then you can absolutely do that. I just like them to be a little bit inside because when I sew things on or whatever, they might stick out. I don't know, it's just how I do it. Uh, and all I've done is I've made three signatures, which is what you call these little pamphlety things that go into a book. And they're, they're all alternately a paper, a cloth, a paper, a cloth, a paper, a cloth, and then a paper again in the middle. And the reason I've put a paper on the inside and the outside is because it's easier to manage when you're binding, I think, because the cloth is a bit floppy and shifty, um, and also the holes can tend to close up after you've made the holes with your awl for binding through. So that's why I've chosen to do a paper and a cloth on the, uh, sorry, a paper and a paper on the out and in. So I've got, I think I did four papers, one, two, three, four papers folded double and three cloths folded double. And the cloth, I've just torn it. I like the raggedy edges. If you wanted to, you know, make your cloth slightly bigger and hem the edges or blanket stitch them or something like that, of course you could do that. And then I did press them with the iron, the cloth to make sure that I had a really nice sharp crease where the spine is. And then I've just put them all together and then I sort of do this, I get them on their, on their spine and just tap them on the table like that and then get my fingers in the middle and you really want to make sure that all the folds are all pressed right up against each other. And you can even then if you want, once it's folded like that, go with the bone folder or something, it's not strictly necessary. But because it's quite thick um, you just want to make sure you know that everything's in where it should be. And then I'm going to get the giant paper clips and then I'm going to um, put one, I normally put one on one side at the bottom and then the other side at the top. With these signatures, you know, there's no right way up and wrong way up. I try and keep them a little bit closed when I'm putting the paper clips on. So if you let it open up, everything sort of pulls apart. You know, it's just how much you want to fiddle and how bothered you are about how it, how it, um, how straight it all ends up being. <laughs> I'm just telling you how to fiddle about if you really want it to be, <coughs> excuse me, 
you know, straight as possible. But you don't have to. You do you. So that's that one ready. So I'll just do the same thing with the other two, so they're all ready. You'll see as well, because on the edges, do you see how the papers are um, getting wider towards the middle? Do you see that? Focus, focus, focus. That's because the outer sheet of paper has got further to travel around all that thickness. If that bothered you again, you can fold your signatures and then cut everything flush. It doesn't bother me. Um, and also, I know when I start sewing things in and altering the thickness of the whole thing, all that will be, um, you know, thrown out of true anyway. So, But I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you, in case you want to know. Um, and I'm trying to get them, you see, you know, my cloth because I tore it and it's all raggedy. Because um, that's just the way I roll. But if you want to line things up better and get things all neat and straight, that is absolutely up to you. So again, just making sure those that fold's really pushed in. So the third one, let's do that quickly. Make sure I've got the middle. Give it a tap. Push in with my fingers. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Got my paper cut the right way around. That is more helpful. And then with it closed, I'm making sure that those folds are all pushed in as far as I can. Put the other paper clip on. Okay, so those are all ready to go. Um, I'm just going to put them in as they come. Although actually I might... Do you see that one's slightly darker? I might put that one in the middle. Um, and that one is the first one because it's got a very nice mark on it. So that's the first thing you'll see when you open the journal. But you know. You know. So um, here's my cover. Here's where my spine's going to be. Now I can feel this side because I've got that cardboard there. So I've made a template and I use this graph paper because I've got it and it just makes it easier to you know, measure and so on. If you've only got plain paper, you can just draw a line down the middle and then bisect the two spaces that are left with another line um, and ditto that way. If I talk you through what I'm going to do with my squared bit, I'm sure you can um, work that out if you have to draw the lines yourself. So I'm just feeling with my thumbnails where it's supposed to go and lining it up somewhat. It's the same size as that bit of cardboard. If you haven't put a bit of cardboard, then you can measure, you know, to work out where your spine should be. I'm hoping my bit of cardboard's in there, glued on there straight. But, you know, I'm very much of the opinion that if it looks straight to me, then it's straight enough. Right, so now I need a pen uh, pencil. I'm going to do T for top. Just because then if I end up turning it the other way around and I'm slightly off somewhere, everything will be slightly off in the same place, if that makes any sense at all. Um, now I'm going to mark, you might see my head coming in because I can't see from all the way up here. I'm going to mark the middle of my template vertically. And I can do that just by counting squares. So two, four, that's the middle there, is it? And then I've got five squares each side, so this is the middle. And I want to bind my first um, hole. I'm going to make three holes, do a three hole pamphlet stitch. I want the first hole to be maybe three squares from the, the top of the template. So then on my, pam on my um, little signature, I can just see that that first hole will be there. So it's sort of three quarters of an inch from the edge of the paper. You could go half an inch from the edge, but I wouldn't want to go closer. Okay, so then you want a hole there and the same at the bottom, which for me is three little squares up. And then you want a hole somewhere in the middle. I think that's the middle by eye. You want to count squares, three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, yeah. So those are my three holes going that way. And then... Um, I'm going, I want one more hole each side to make my total of three. So I'm going, I've got five squares. I'm going to go three squares out, I think. This kind of varies for me, depending on what size things end up being. I'm going to leave quite a big gap between the signatures so that there is a little bit of room for growth. And so I've got less room on the outside, 
but the outside is the edge of the book. Do you see what I mean? So that's already got more room. So that's my, my thinking. Um, now I need to put this underneath. I didn't really need to do all that with it laid on there, but now I have got it laid on there. I don't really want to move it. <clears throat> and I want to punch some holes. I've got an awl, which I use, um, which is, you know, pointy. I suppose you could use a compass or if you had a huge, great big sewing needle or something like that. If you've got a huge, great, great big sewing needle, be careful not to push the other end into your hand. And all I'm going to do now, I've got this underneath, it's just a few layers of packaging so that I don't go into my cutting mat. Keeping as vertically as possible, I'm just going to punch holes straight through until I can feel that I'm going into my cardboard. Three. A bit thicker there because of the pocket. Whoops, stay. Come on. Why is it sticking in there? Oop, come out. Oh, there we go, I got stuck. I don't know why it's got glue on. I've got glue on my oil, that's not helpful. Um, and then I'm going to get my... Before I move that, because fabric holes tend to close up, I then get my handy blue pen. If you haven't got one, you could use a pen, it's quite a soft pencil and just make a little dot in each hole. Like I say, I hope you can't see the back of my head because I haven't brushed my hair this morning, <laughs> full disclosure. Um, so now I can see my little blue dots um, and I'm hoping my lining doesn't shift up and down. But actually it doesn't matter that much because it is glued to the lining. Now you see I go and look on the outside and I can hardly see my holes at all. Excuse me, while I can see them, I'm going to make blue dots there as well. If you really can't see them, it depends what fabric you've used. If you really can't see the holes, what you could do is poke your awl gently through from the other side and then when you just see the tip appearing, then you can make a little dot. But I just think it's worth doing the dots because otherwise you're poking around you know, if you can't see, and you're making holes everywhere. So that's all ready for binding. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to use this as my book binding cradle that I made following a tutorial by Nick the Booksmith. Um, I shall try and remember to put the link below again. If I forget, the link is in the other um, soft cover journal video. But anyway, it's, it's Nick the Booksmith. Mine, she made hers out of foam board, mine's just made out of, you know, an old cardboard box. So I'm going to use the same template, and I'm going to fold it in half. It's got some scribbling on the back, we'll ignore that. Just put it on the desk to fold it in half. <clears throat> and I'm going to put it in my signature, and it's more or less the same height as my pages. Otherwise I'd just central it somewhat. And then I'm going to punch only the middle hole first. Don't know why, just do it like that. Should clean my hole really. And then the top and bottom holes. And it's it's got the cloth in, so you want to be sure that you go right through. But you see that the paper holes will stay open on there and also there, so I can see them. If I had cloth on the outside, it might make it more tricky. If you've got only cloth, then obviously you might have to do the blue pen or something for this as well. But if you are doing cloth and paper, that's what, how I re would recommend um, dealing with that. So let's just do the other two the same. One, two, three. I'm keeping those, by the way, I'm keeping them the right way up because of this teeth top thing. You know, I'm getting really... Do I really mind if one ends up eighth of an inch higher than the other two? Not really. I'm just telling you in case it does bother you <laughs> so that you can avoid it. One, mind your fingers obviously with pointy tools. Three. Okay. Keep it the right way up. Get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. So now I just need some binding thread. 
I like to use this, which is waxed linen. This was actually a vintage wax linen that I got, I think, on eBay a long time ago, but it's lasting and lasting. Um, if you don't have wax linen, you could use any thread, but I would then recommend waxing it. And you can just rub it, you know, through a candle if you don't have sewer's wax. And I need my book binding needle. Where's that gone? I put it ready. It's run away. It's run away. Mm. There it is. Which is just a needle with a biggish eye. Um, and quite a lot. It's actually not my book binding needle. My book binding needle is longer than that. Get a big needle, basically. That would be too big because that will make a big hole. Uh, that one, I'll take that one. And I bought these as a, actually, I think they came with my awl as a set. Um, but if you've just got, if you've got a sashko needle or a cruel needle or even a darning needle, you know, just, just something with a big eye that's quite long. And I just measure, for a three hole pamphlet stitch, I just measure three lengths which is always too much, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. And thread my needle, which usually, usually with the wax thread, goes pretty easily. Yes. Right, so I get my journal. I have it the right way up. And um, I do apologise if you see my head. <laughs> but with, I haven't got my glasses on because um, I need new glasses basically and I can't really see very well with them on um, but I might need to come in close so that I can see so I always start with the back signature and work forwards That's, you could do it the other way I just find it easier this way um, another thing is depending on which side you start that's where your tails will end up so if you, you start on the inside your two tails of thread will end up on the inside and vice versa I nearly always start on the inside but I'm just telling you so you've got the choice. So I'm coming out through that middle hole like that. Can you see or have I crept off? And then I get my tail and I just trap it under the paper clip so it doesn't pull all the way through. And then I'm going out through the corresponding hole in the cover, which is the one the middle hole nearest to the back. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that it goes through. Slightly to one side. It's always with cloth it shifts. It's much easier to make books out of cardboard and paper, I think. There we go. Don't pull it too much or you'll pull your thread off your clip. And then I'm going to go in through the top hole. In through the top hole. It's nearly in the hole, I just angle the needle slightly. And now it is. And then back in through the top hole of the pamphlet. Now the thing to do here is not open it right up, it's to keep it just, I've just got my fingers in there, I hope you can see, yeah. Just to keep it, you know, nearly closed because then all your holes will be in line. Hopefully. And you'll go through. And then of course you can't see, so you have to peep. That's it. And then let me get it all so it's near enough to the spine. You can tighten it all up in a little bit. And then you come right, you jump over the middle hole and you go back down through the, the bottom hole. Again, it should line up better if you let it flip a little bit closed. And then out through the corresponding hole in the spine. That one played nicely. And then you go back in through the middle hole again. Now here you have to be careful not to split your, um, your binding thread because that makes it really difficult, if not impossible, to pull it up tight. So I'm going through the hole just to the side of the thread. You probably can't see, but I hope you know what I mean. There we go. If it won't come through, I find a little wiggle helps better than just pulling straight. 
and get hold of my tail inside now and just pull it up a little bit. Not You don't want to rip your paper but you want it to be firm. And then I'm going to go through the same hole in the paper. And then when I come out on the inside I want to make sure that I come out the other side of that central strand. So I've got the tail that side and I'm coming out this side. And then take your needle off. And I'm going to have to lay it down to do this. And I'll just get hold of the two tails and give a gentle tug. And watch that middle strand pull up tight, like that. You don't want to over pull because, like I said, you can rip your paper. And then you can twang it like a guitar string. And the same on the outside. That's twangy enough. And then I'm going to tie a knot. And I usually tie three knots. Two knots is probably enough. I don't know why I tie three. Probably think three knots is better, which isn't necessarily the case, but anyway. And because it's wax thread, it's not a bad idea to get the, your your bone folder, or if you haven't got that, you could use the handle of your scissors or something. And just gently what's called burnishing the knot. And that sort of squidges all the wax together and locks the knot. Now I've also known people put a teeny tiny dot of glue on there, but well nothing's come apart on me yet, touch wood. That's not wood. And then just trim my tails. Some people leave the tails and put dangles on if you want to do that. And I generally leave the paper clips on until I've done the whole thing because I find it just keeps everything out of the way. So now I'm going to do that same thing. That's the wrong needle. Two more times. I'm not going to put the needle in my mouth. <laughs> oh dear. One, whoops. One, two, three. So feel free to fast forward. In fact, um, probably edit it out. So I'm just going to put the other two signatures in off camera and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've done that. All three signatures are in. I will take the paper clips off. And then you can see in between there, you see there is quite a gap. But that will give this a bit of room when I start putting things in it to, you know, expand. Not enough room. We're still going to have alligator mouth. But a bit of room. And there's another gap, you see. And you see the bit of the pocket, but I thought that was preferable than cutting the pocket either end. And they're just simpler. Simpler, I thought. Last one. Um, so all I need to do now is put my tie on. Um, oh yeah, I talked about the spine. Having a look at the spine now, apart from the blue dots, <coughs> excuse me, um, I don't think it looks too bad, you know, just with the the binding lines. They're, they're nearly straight. <laughs> so I think I will just leave it like that. I don't, you know, if you weren't happy with it or you wanted to zhuzh it up a bit, you could stitch some bits of lace or strips of cloth or, you know, whatever on there now. But I quite like it like that. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. But I'll get the blue dots off. So for my tie, I've got my twisty twine. And half of this is the cord off the apron. Sorry, it's gone blurry again. Half of it's, you know, that I used to make the pages. And the other half is just some um, eco print silk, which is the same as what I use around the edges. So again, it's just the dark and light theme. And I've put the bead on one end, a wooden bead. And then this end is only loosely knotted. I'm going to attach it in here and I'm going to trap it between the layers. So I'm going to get that middle pin away. I'm going to undo that because I only knotted it loosely, the end I started from. And um, I like to make the twine super long because you don't know how big it's going to get. I'm just doing a bit of reverse twining here. Um, you don't know how big it's going to get. 
So you can, and when the book's finished, if it's still way too long, obviously you can cut it short. And um, sandwich the two flattish so I can stitch through them. And if you want to make sure it's exactly in the middle, you know, you can. I'm going to go for somewhere there. I'm going to go in a bit further, I think. Get my pin back. I can't see. I'm going to have to put my head in again, I think. There we go. And then I think what I'm going to do is, um, I should have a bigger pin, but is um, copy what I've done here, just a line of running stitch, and um, try to not go right through to the outside, is my plan. So I have to, I've got a bit of thread, it's the same thread that I used, it's, um, it was that Valdani um, thickish cotton. So. Okay. Oh yeah, the other thing I did, the ends, the two raw ends, can you see I did a, quite a lot of overcast stitches really close together where this met at the end. You, I could have, if I'd thought about it in advance, left it longer and turned it in, but um, I did that instead. So I'm just going to come up here somewhere from the back. Tuck my knot in. Get that pin away. And then um, while I do this, I shall talk about my plans for this little. So I want to go slightly further in. I'm just going to creep in a bit further. What I thought I'd do with this journal is um, use it to explore log cabins. And um, because a lady called Machtelt, who's one of my subscribers, who has her own channel, where she's doing mostly um, journaling. It's called A Daily Dose of Paper. Um, anyway, a few a couple of weeks ago, she made a paper log cabin with strips of paper. And I was really intrigued by that and I wanted to have a go at that myself. And also I have talked about courthouse steps layout for log cabins and um, Manx, Manx quilts, which are very similar to log cabins. So there's all kinds of things, there's all kinds of possibilities, I think, that are as yet unexplored by me. So I thought I could use this journal to maybe explore some of those things and share them here with you. Now if we didn't already have the weekly slow stitch going, I might have made that a weekly a weekly thing. But we do, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to um, go through, I'll hold it up rather than putting my head in the way. I'm just going to go through to the in, to the inside between the two layers and then I'm going to put my twine in where I want it, like that. And I'm going to do a couple of stitches, hopefully without stabbing myself anymore, just to hold that inside there and then it doesn't matter. It's the cotton, I think, or the linen that was from made that 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 tie was made from. I'm just going to use the end of my bone folder to push that needle through. It's so hard to stitch through, and especially with this thick thread, I have bled on my. Um... There we go. Right, now I'm going to come back where I should be. Excuse me while I suck my finger. And wipe it on my skirt. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my old gardening skirt. In my defence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you think I'm gross. I can't help it. It's just the way I am. Right. So now I can go along without worrying about having to get that twisty tie twiny tie. My stitches have gone completely wonky, but Okay. I don't think it, that's probably because I've got the thick thread and I should have a bigger eyed needle. But since I'm nearly there, I'll persevere. Not 
changing needles for the sake of two or three more stitches. That's better. Right. Sigh of relief. You see, I would not want to do that kind of sewing for any length of time because that is not pleasant. Um, and I hear people saying that they've tried to hand stitch with batiks and it's unpleasant and I've seen people with wounds in their thumbs and fingers and just just don't do that. Just don't do that. <laughs> Find something nice to stitch with and, and use that. You know, every now and then, like I just had to do there a little line and a couple of stitches and I had to... Um, push through with the handle of the bone folder. Be careful doing that. Um, is okay, tolerable, but not for any length of time. Okay, so I need to get the blue marks off there. I need to get that little dot of blood off there. <laughs> and I'll finish saying what I was saying, which is, um, yeah, so I thought of making some paper log cabins, some cloth ones, all different kinds, playing around with the light and the dark. Um, maybe combining paper and cloth, um, playing with the layout of the log cabin, whatever I can think of that log cabin related that's with paper and or cloth. Um, and then I think I'll, when I think of them, <clears throat> like I said I'm not promising weekly, um, put them on, on a Wednesday as an extra little video because um, we're calling that Wonky Wednesday. And also coming up, I'm just flipping through while I'm talking so you can see the loveliness um, of these papers. Also um, Wonky Wednesday, I have got some other sort of log cabin related things that will come up as well. So like I said, I want to talk about Manx quilting and um, I want to make something like a table runner um, or maybe a cushion cover or something like that that takes you know a good few blocks joined together to explain and show the principles that I would use if I were or when I make a log cabin quilt, you know, a whole quilt. Um, so that will come up at one point as well. So meanwhile, I hope you liked the <laughs> wonky log cabin journal and the, the cloth and paper together. Um, obviously you can use all different papers and all different cloths if you like, but I wanted to use my, all my rusty, my rusty cloths. Um, and um, yeah, sorry about the wounds. <laughs> And uh, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to you joining me next time for more Cloth Tales. Bye bye.